Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Paul and Gita for Kotaku.com. And today we're checking out uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses in one of the first battles that you'll encounter uh, once you're able to take your team or your class out into the field to do some real battling. Um, this first one is really cool because you'll see the two little bridges there. It gives you an opportunity to flank the enemy and do this sort of, sort of like pincer attack. But I, I kind of thought this was a really great uh, opportunity to show off like the, the battle system. Um, what do you think of this first battle? I really like these early maps because they do, they're teaching tools, really. Like a, a lot of the game itself is already about teaching, given that you are a teacher in this game. But these ones, these early ones, it teaches you a lot about strategy, right? Like it teaches you the potential benefits, but also put potential losses if you do a flanking strategy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here, um, one of the things I wanted to note was my, my class leader, Claude. I changed his class literally the the right before this match started so you'll see he has like different attire on than when you start off with him and I also equipped his little axe so he'd be able to defend himself because I knew he was going to be hit in the line of fire and also I just wanted to show off Hilda here who I kind of adore. I love Hilda. <laughs> yeah, it's she's... so funny in all of Hilda's like support conversations she's always like mm, I'm so bad at fighting <laughs> but then she's a beast on yeah. the battlefield. She, even like her her trash talk is so cute. She's I like know. oh like I put in work. Like she actually says things like that which I love. <laughs> oh and this little like tile here has this pink like you know orbs floating around in it and that is because I connected my switch online and that's where someone or an ally has died. And if I, you know, get a unit over that tile, I'll then get, uh, in this case, weapons that I can give to Raphael here later on. If I'm, you know, paired up next to him, I can trade them and give him better gauntlets if, he, if, if I wanted to, which is pretty cool. That um, is pretty cool. Yeah. I think the ways in which they've integrated the online features are not distracting. In a way, they feel a little bit like... Dark Soulsy. Totally. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like it's it's just enough. <laughs> yeah, it's just enough. You're it's right. not like players are going to be invading your game or anything. Right. But you see, like uh, during the calendar phase, you'll see a certain percentage of players decide to do X on X day, and on the battlefield, you do get to see also where characters had trouble. Right. And that can lead you to making different battle choices. Totally. And yeah, and you saw just a second ago, my, my guy Claude, he used his. Um, combat art which is something that i think is changing a little bit in fire emblem right you yeah were mentioning it to me earlier it changed a little bit other games depended on the weapons triangle to show you what would be powerful against certain kinds of enemies and this one that weapons triangle is kind of present you'll you know axe users will eventually earn a skill that allows them to be better versus another type of weapon but more important than that are the combat arts. So we're about to see um, Ignatz, my boy Ignatz. My boy. He's about to use uh, the curve shot combat art, which uh, makes the range for the bow a lot larger. It's more useful to use those to defeat powerful enemies of a certain type. Totally. A lot of characters get ones that make them powerful against, like Helm Splitter for axe users. This is another way that Hilda's a beast. Yeah. Helm Splitter just rips through uh, enemies with heavy armor on them. And so you do end up using those oh oh yeah so, so sad. He, here's the part i clipped out where i totally forgot i had marianne back here and and the gang uh and they just got like completely run up on by these enemy soldiers so i wanted to show off um very quickly just how you know i just i just lost sight of this in in one of the quick battles i was doing uh here at the office and then what i did was at the very next on my very next move after these guys you know start moving their way towards uh my team I go ahead and activate the Divine Pulse, which is a, uh, which I believe is in addition to the series, correct? Yeah, this is a brand new thing. This, The series had, was originally only permadeath, and then they added classic mode where characters don't really die. This kind of splits the difference where you can use it on permadeath or uh, casual mode and allows you to kind of go back in time. So here he's gone back in time to move uh, Marianne out of the way and have her kill this guy giving the team a better tactical advantage and making sure she doesn't get murked. Yeah, pretty much. And it actually worked out. Now that I knew how to approach this specific scenario, I went ahead and, and did it way more effectively. I got some health back on, on that one using Nosferatu. And I was able to, like, you know, strategically move my, my characters in a way that we didn't hurt as bad. And you can only use it twice, which is kind of a nice compromise. It's like yeah. that Into the Breach reset yeah. feature. Yeah, you can't rely on it, but yeah. it's nice to have.